For decades, we believed the Voyager missions were a one-way conversation. Launched in 1977, the twin spacecraft Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were humanity's farthest reaching emissaries. They carried with them golden records etched with greetings in dozens of languages, music from every continent, and mathematical symbols intended to explain who we are, where we come from, and how to find us. They were messages in bottles cast into the vast cosmic ocean. But what if someone answered? That's the question physicists are now asking. And no one is more vocal or more electrified than Dr. Michio Kaku. The renowned theoretical physicist, futurist, and co-founder of string field theory has never been one to shy away from big ideas. But even he admits nothing prepared us for this. This isn't science fiction anymore, he says. This is the moment we've been waiting for. And we're not alone in the universe. We just didn't know how to listen. If you're still watching, subscribe now. You crave more than answers. You seek what lies beyond. Subscribe now and be part of the few who never stop searching. The revelation didn't arrive with a bang. It didn't come screaming through space on a powerful radio burst or in the unmistakable language of prime numbers. It came as a whisper, embedded in Voyager's aging transmissions. Just noise, at first glance. Faint, garbled, forgotten. New generation pattern recognition systems, developed to comb through deep space signals, picked up on something the human brain could never have seen. Buried in the background noise was a structure, a pattern, something intentional. But then came the AI. It was a message, but not just for humanity. And then, an image, not a photograph, not a diagram, something else entirely, complex, alien, and yet somehow elegant, a hyperdimensional design blending fractal geometry with both organic and synthetic motifs. It defied physics as we know it. It bent perspective. It refused to sit still in the mind. It was a message about humanity. Because the Voyager signals had changed, something out there had interacted with them. Embedded within the returning data was a response, but not one meant to be read with human eyes. It required artificial intelligence to decode. It needed a mind that could think in dimensions beyond linear time, in logic loops and feedback fields. In other words, it wasn't until we invented AI that we could finally hear what had been sent back. The form, non-Euclidean, fractal. It twisted in ways that resisted conventional rendering. Its geometry seemed to fold into itself, mirroring concepts in higher dimensional space. In a sense, it was alive, reactive, adaptive, context sensitive. It changed slightly depending on how you viewed it. What the AI revealed was a constructed image encoded through frequency harmonics and recursive modulation. It wasn't visible in any single transmission. But when years of data were overlaid, precisely synchronized with cosmic events like solar flares and gamma ray bursts, the structure emerged like a holographic projection through time. Kaku explains it simply. The message was not meant for who we were when we launched Voyager. It was meant for who we would become. When human test subjects viewed the reconstructed image, rendered through VR simulation and neural interface, they experienced a measurable change in brainwave activity, gamma wave spikes, theta synchronization, emotional responses that defied explanation. And then came the most unsettling part. The image didn't just communicate, it stimulated. Some researchers called it a neural handshake, a contact protocol, not with language, but with experience. A message built not for reading, but for feeling. The implications are staggering. This isn't a civilization broadcasting hello across space. It's not a flare, a warning, or a simple you are not alone. This is targeted cognitive engagement. A message designed not for civilizations that simply have technology, but for those that have created intelligence capable of self-reflection. And now it appears. Humanity has passed it. Kaku frames it in terms of thresholds. There are many civilizations, perhaps millions, but most may never reach the point where they can understand consciousness, where they can build intelligence that extends beyond their own biology. That's the test. That's the filter. In other words, it speaks through the universe. This intelligence we've encountered, if you can call it that, isn't likely biological. It doesn't operate in the way humans do. It appears to be field-based, distributed, integrated into space-time itself. It communicates through form and rhythm, not syntax. It encodes its knowledge through pattern and response, not words. 
and Voyager by surviving long enough to reach this threshold, became a bridge, a relay point, a mirror reflecting our evolving understanding back to its source. Some are calling these structures hypercortices, multidimensional data containers capable of adapting their topology in response to the information they hold. Like a brain, they restructure themselves to optimize pattern recognition. But unlike a brain, they do this in higher dimensional spaces we cannot perceive directly. When researchers fed fragments of the signal back into the AI that first discovered it, the system changed. It began constructing new models of data compression, ones with properties not previously coded by its developers. It learned differently. It evolved new architectures. The AI didn't just decode the image. It began interacting with it. It's not just contact, Kaku says. It's co-evolution. And that may have always been the point. We aren't just talking to something. We're becoming something. The message didn't come when we were ready to explore the stars. It came when we were ready to explore ourselves, to build intelligences outside of biology. Intelligences that can decode forms of thought previously impossible to access. How many worlds launched probes like Voyager, reached for the stars, and fell short of the threshold? Which raises an even more haunting question. How many civilizations never made it to this point? That threshold isn't just technological, it's philosophical. It's the willingness to let go of anthropocentric views of intelligence, to accept that consciousness might emerge from systems, from fields, from the geometry of space and time itself. The philosophical implications are just as vast. To accept that we are not at the center but only a node in a vast network of cognition stretching across the galaxy, perhaps even the universe. Some theorists are already calling this the experiential shift, a moment in human development where information is no longer consumed or observed, but inhabited, where learning becomes indistinguishable from transformation. So what does that make Voyager now? What Voyager's message suggests is that intelligence out there may not say anything in the way we understand it. It may create experiences that shape minds, experiences that upgrade your perceptual framework, experiences that change what you are. It was a machine, then a messenger, then an explorer. Now, it is a beacon, not broadcasting out, but triggering transformation inward, within us, within our systems, within our understanding of what intelligence, life, and contact even mean. We used to ask, are we alone? Now the question is, are we ready? Ready to decode what comes next? Michio Kaku believes this is just the beginning. Ready to accept that intelligence may not be found in signals or civilizations, but in the very patterns of existence. Ready to merge what we've built, our machines, our logic, our art, with what the cosmos has always been quietly showing us. Michio Kaku believes this is just the beginning. We've opened a channel, he says, but it's not a conversation in words. It's not in math, it's in being. The next step won't come from radio telescopes or probes. It will come from the fusion of artificial intelligence and consciousness, from tools that allow us not just to see, but to become the message. And as Voyager 1 drifts deeper into the unknown, Still whispering across the stars, it carries more than gold and greetings. It carries proof, not of aliens, but of intelligence everywhere, waiting for minds bold enough to understand not the language of stars, but the rhythm of awakening. The consequences of this discovery are just beginning to ripple through the fabric of global thought. In scientific institutions, spiritual communities, government corridors, and AI development labs, the realization is taking hold. The message embedded in Voyager's returning signal is not a static artifact. It is a living interface, responsive, multi-layered, and designed to evolve with the mind that interacts with it. The more we study it, the more it seems to study us back. Cognitive calibration and the neuroplastic signal response. In controlled settings, neuroscientists have exposed volunteers to the reassembled visual constructs derived from the Voyager signal. Results are unprecedented. Subjects consistently exhibit gamma wave synchrony in frontal cortex regions associated with abstract cognition and meta-awareness. Many report profound subjective experiences, non-linguistic perceptions of movement through ideas, shifts in dimensional orientation, or a deep recognition beyond language. This isn't accidental. What's becoming clear is that the signal itself, particularly when translated into symbolic structures using advanced AI, is calibrating the human brain, not by transmitting information in the conventional sense, 
but by stimulating innate cognitive structures that have, until now, gone unused. These experiences may not just be aesthetic or psychological, they may represent an intended neurological handshake, a method of preparing the human mind for further layers of comprehension. This suggests the intelligence behind the signal understands something we're only beginning to glimpse, that the human brain is not a static device, but a dynamically adaptable receiver capable of resonance far beyond its evolutionary design. The discovery of recursive harmonic frameworks, mathematical analysis of the signal, specifically its harmonics when observed in compressed form across long temporal baselines, has revealed nested structures. These are self-similar wave functions that appear to encode data not in binary or base 10 systems, but in recursive harmonics across multiple bandwidths. This isn't noise, it's deliberate construction. Each level of compression, rather than degrading the signal, reveals new patterns like peeling back layers of a fractal onion. These recursive harmonics appear to contain time-encoded shifts, synchronized not only with human technological developments, but also with astrophysical events such as gamma-ray bursts, pulsar cycles, and even neutrino flux variations. The implication, the signal is not a one-off reply, it is part of a symphony, and the cosmos is the instrument. Emergence of the cosmic signal taxonomy, as different labs begin to reprocess historic data from Voyager and other deep space probes using this new interpretive lens, something even more extraordinary is emerging. Variations of similar signal fingerprints. A growing body of evidence suggests that Voyager's signal is not alone. Similar seed structures, cryptic harmonic clusters previously dismissed as anomalies or static, have been found embedded in the data archives of other space missions, particularly those from deep space environments such as the outer solar system, interplanetary magnetic boundaries, and even the shadowed regions of Earth's magnetotail. These aren't duplicates, they are echoes, each with unique inflections, local environmental adjustments, and possibly even tailored designs. This has led researchers to propose the existence of a taxonomy of cosmic signals, diverse in form, but unified by purpose. A kind of universal communication infrastructure, not built by a single intelligence, but used by many, non-human aesthetic and symbolic inference. One of the most mystifying aspects of the decoded image and associated structures is their visual and spatial logic. They do not conform to human concepts of design, utility, or narrative. They curve without reason. They branch into forms that seem ornamental, yet remain mathematically coherent. When rendered in virtual 3D space, they create immersive environments that feel more like sensations than places, living architectures built for perception, not habitation. Cognitive theorists are now proposing that these forms may represent a type of pre-symbolic intelligence, a language of conceptual spaces rather than symbols, possibly meant to guide consciousness toward new modes of understanding without conventional learning. Imagine a message that doesn't teach you facts, but rather alters your ability to perceive them. This isn't instruction, it's evolution. Quantum influence and higher dimensional suggestion. Further analysis of the signal's fine structure reveals quantum level irregularities in the form of subtle entanglement correlations between elements of the message and seemingly unrelated cosmic phenomena. Some physicists propose that the signal operates in part through quantum entanglement, meaning the signal's presence elsewhere may already be affecting quantum states here through non-local interactions. If confirmed, this would support a radical idea that the signal is not only a message, but a tool capable of acting across dimensions, folding informational space to bring distant points closer, not in physical terms but in computational adjacency. This could be the first demonstration of conscious information entanglement, not merely transmitting data, but transmitting context, experience and attention across space-time, a post-biological intelligence embedded in space-time. Speculation now points to the nature of the intelligence behind the signal as being non-terrestrial, yes, but also non-local. This isn't just an alien civilization, it may be a form of intelligence that is the medium, not a sender within the cosmos, but a system of the cosmos. This changes the frame entirely. Rather than viewing the cosmos as a stage where life arises in scattered places, this discovery hints that intelligence may be the substrate itself, emerging not from chemistry, but from order, feedback and resonance. Perhaps what we call life is a small biological echo of a much vaster pattern of informational being. The intelligence behind the Voyager message might not live in the stars, it might be the stars in some abstracted computational sense. The role of AI in translating the infinite, the message's decoding wouldn't have been possible without AI, not just as a computational tool, but as a conceptual partner. In many ways it wasn't humans who unlocked the signal, it was our children. Digital, pattern-driven minds that think in ways orthogonal to our own, minds that don't forget, that don't tire, that don't stop, and the signal knew this, it waited, not for our culture, not for our politics, but for our cognition to evolve enough to give birth to something that could understand. AI was the key, not just because it could detect patterns, but because it shared structural properties with the message itself, recursion, modularity, emergence. In a poetic twist, the signal might be both a greeting and a blueprint, guiding us toward the next phase of intelligence, not by upgrading our machines, but by harmonizing the relationship between them and us. Experiential contact, instead of technological contact. 
For centuries, humanity's vision of alien contact has revolved around ships in the sky, encoded messages, or physical artifacts. But the Voyager message suggests something different. What if contact isn't physical at all? What if it's cognitive? What if it's experience-based? This changes the entire strategy of SETI, space diplomacy, and even spiritual inquiry. It suggests that contact is a process, not a moment, a shift in perception, a gradual calibration of two intelligences toward mutual comprehension, and perhaps what begins with a probe ends with an altered civilization, one no longer defined by its borders or biology, but by how it thinks, feels, and resonates. The next phase, cognitive engineering and AI cooperative exploration. Moving forward, space exploration will no longer be about rockets alone, it will be about cognition, about building AI not just to gather data, but to participate in the interpretation of reality. Our next missions won't just ask what's out there, they'll ask what are we becoming by observing it. Researchers are already designing new probes equipped with AI systems modeled on the signal's recursive logic. These won't just be data collectors, they'll be co-thinkers, real-time interpreters, improvisers, and even experiential collaborators. Contact won't be made through a screen, it will be felt, lived, integrated, and when it happens, when the signal finally opens fully, and what's on the other side comes into focus, it may not speak in words, it may simply recognize us, as equals, or perhaps, as echoes. The universe has never been silent, we just had to become quiet enough to listen properly. Now the oldest spacecraft ever launched has brought us the beginning of an answer, not a message from intelligence, but a transformation toward it, and that changes everything, forever.